We're in the Great Hall of the Irish Museum of Modern Art and it marks a historical moment where we'll be forming Yvonne Rayner's Trio A tonight. Trio A I worked on for six months in the, in the summer of 1965 and I, I realized it would be composed of these separate components, but what came to me after working for a while was that these were very disparate kinds of movements and there would be a, a principle of unmodulated inflection. And that is the guiding and the most difficult thing to learn. Yeah, everyone can do these movements, but how you put them together and keep a, a flow uh, of uh, very different kinds of movement. And, and so that was the challenge for me, and it took me a while to figure out that's what this was about, and it took me a while to uh, execute it, and, and this idea. I felt that so much dance and my own uh, involvement as a performer had to do with a certain kind of exhibitionism and maybe narcissism, and I was, I felt self-critical about that. And uh, so, okay, I'm not going to engage uh, with the, the uh, um, fascination of the audience. I'm not gonna play into that by meeting their gaze, the gaze of the spectators. So every time the body faced the, uh, the audience, the head, would be involved in a separate move. And, uh, and the one time you come up very frontally, um, the eyes are closed. So uh, either the head was revolving around or the body and the head were uh, averted from uh, making eye contact with the spectators. Uh, so I guess, yeah, that was a political kind of critique of my history and my own involvement as a dancer. Hi, I'm Pat Catterson, and I'm a New York-based dance artist. I'm a choreographer and dancer and educator. I also work for Yvonne Rayner. I first worked with her in 1969. First saw her work, learned it, and performed it. But since 1999, I have been working with her on her new choreography and assisting her, rehearsal assistant, and also I'm a custodian of her early works, which is what brought me to Emma, where I'm staging for Yvonne's early dances. And Yvonne's work has, it has this very strong intelligent intellectual aspect to it, or this conceptual grounding, I guess is the better way to say it. And so I was really uh, drawn to that. And um, so in the beginning, I learned a lot from her about having the courage to do what you want to do, but also to, to think through what you're doing, to have a reason why you're doing what you're doing. And I, I think what's wonderful about the relationship is I know she trusts me. And that, that feels really wonderful. I feel we're friends. And so I still admire her, but I feel we're, we're friends also. And uh, I want to support and honor her as much as I can and, uh, and honor the work. And, um, you know, protect her legacy, really. My name is Rachel Gilburn and I'm a curator at the Irish Museum of Modern Art. We're here today in the Courtyard Galleries to install a solo exhibition by Andrea Geyer. It's just two weeks since the live performances of Yvonne Rayner and Geyer's show will open in two days time. Andrea Geyer has been deeply influenced by the work of Yvonne Rayner and is just one artist among many who works across disciplines and continues to be influenced by Vaughan Rayner's legacy. Hi, my name is Andrea Geyer. I'm an artist. Uh, I live in New York City. Uh, we're in my exhibition at Emma called When We, uh, which looks at histories that have been often forgotten or overlooked, even though they are integral to how we experience the present moment. We are in a room of uh, surrounded by a work called Constellations, which are um, hand-cut uh, photographs uh, showing women who held salons in the early part of the 20th century. 
Um, these salons were uh, really important meeting places between people who were involved in culture, but also in social reform and in politics. Women facilitated uh, a space to uh, meet and mingle and discuss and uh, support each other. I want the museum to be a place where people cannot help but speak, materializing the freedom and radicality of conversation. So like Yvonne, I've always been really interested in the con not only the work itself, but the way, the context in which work uh, meets a viewer. Um, so Manifest really puts that out as a question. Um, where are we meeting art? Where are we engaging in culture? Who is part of this uh, community that looks at art together? I always say art is a collective experience. Even if we see an artwork by ourselves, there is always a lot of people who have seen the work before and there's also of course the projection of a lot of people seeing the work after one has seen it. So I'm really interested in that kind of collective power that uh, a viewing of a work can uh, produce. And the museum then as an environment, I think, needs to really rethink itself, particularly in the current political climate, where we need any space to come together collectively to think through very difficult and challenging political questions.